Hey everyone, tonight I'm joined by my good friend Tom Wells, who's a product designer. He's going to be looking at the Sketch 71 Beta live collaboration feature with me. Let's go and take a look. All right, Tom, tell the people about yourself. Uh, thank you, Chris Fadine. Um, look, firstly, thanks for inviting me to this um, this episode. Um, yeah, I am a product designer of seven years and am really looking forward to um, doing this with you today. Awesome. Well, let's get into it. Okay, for now, this feature requires you to have contributors set up in your Teams account for Sketch for Teams. So if we scroll down, and now I'm in the scale team settings, and you can see that I'm there as the admin, and I've added Tom below as a contributor. So both of us have edit access rights to any file that's in the scale team. Okay, and here we are in the Sketch 71 beta. We go up to the top here and go about Sketch beta, it is there, version 71. And this is the file that Tom and I are gonna be working in together. The first artboard is a game of tic-tac-toe, so we're gonna have at it there and see who wins. The second uh, artboard is Skero, which is Sketch and Miro mixed together. Yeah, dad jokes, you know. Uh, we're going to go and do a like a design huddle, if you will, here. There's an A design and a B design that we can use these post-it notes, which are, this is like a normal comment. This is something you like. This is something you don't like or could be, you know, improved upon. We're going to vote on which one we want and then use the last artboard to improve on A and B. Okay, I'm going to go back to this first artboard. If you look at the toolbar and go over to the top right, you can see my avatar there and it's got an active circle around it saying that I'm in this document, right? Now we just have to get Tom in here. So since he's part of the scale team and sketch for teams, uh, Tom, can you go to file and open cloud document for me? On the left-hand side, you should be able to see a bunch of folders. Yeah, I can see all those folders, yeah. yeah. And if you go to the last one, sketch series. Yeah, I can see that. You can click on Sketch 71 Beta dash real time collaboration. Yeah, this is the Nulls and Crosses, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I can see that. Okay, and there he is. We can see Tom Wells in a little uh, blue arrow there. Fantastic. We're both in the file together. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And let's get it on. All right, Tom, you can grab one of these little uh, knots and crosses up the top and just go for it. I'm going to let you go first, mate. Let's make it a bit more personal, eh? <laughs> That's actually better. All right, so since your head is kind of shaped like a circle, I'm going to be the cross here. Yeah. Much appreciated. I could bring in my own avatar, but that would be uh, too vain of me. Too big, be too yeah. big. Yeah, it, it wouldn't fit in the um, entire sketch infinite no. art board. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so, hmm, I'm gonna go. Hmm, here. Uh, clever move, Mr. Dean, clever move. I think I'm going to go to that. Yeah. But oh, very, very smart move. Yeah, but now you got me. Any, anybody knows this. Okay. Can I just do that and say I've won? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Is that really where you want to put it? Uh, yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah, what are you getting about? Bang. Oh. Who's your daddy? You are, Tom. I'm going to put a line straight through this. I'm going straight onto LinkedIn and I'm going to tell everybody I'm thinking you've got some crosses. There we go. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Feels good. Feels good. Cool. All right. Let's have another game. So clear the board. Okay, now I'm going to start. And uh, I'm just going to change the color of this, if I can, to orange. Do you feel like you have to stylize it because I've brought in my own avatar? 
Now, I think since we're both orange type people, we can um, you know look the part a bit more. Here we go. Okay, so yeah, what are you going to do, Tom? Yeah, it's a good. It's, uh, it's tricky. I think we're going to apply the Queen's Gambit, <laughs> which was excellent, by the way. That I mean, I can play chess a bit. My daughter normally beats me all the time, but that was a fantastic series. It was good. Mm. Oh, that's pretty clever. That stops me from doing what I wanted to do. Yeah, so that, that's what I'm here for, Chris. Yeah. Damn, you saw through my strategy. <laughs> I'm awake this time. And nobody wins. I might just talk a little bit about this feature so far, right? I mean, we've seen this capability in things like Figma for a while, in Miro, uh, but it's really good to see it finally uh, get to sketch and be working pretty well. I mean, this seems like a very similar approach to those two solutions. And uh, the thing to note here is that I haven't pressed saved once. So just like those other platforms, Sketch is saving continuously in the background. But if I go and hit command save, it's gonna tell me that the document has updated. So there is a version that's now being created that I can then roll back from later on if we don't like what we're doing. But let's have one more game, man. Um, yeah. I know we're playing a game, but I like the idea of being able to um, operate with somebody not necessarily in the same environment in a way that enables you to see what each other's doing. I think that's good. I'm in a you know suburb that is really far away from Tom at the moment. And through the magic of the internet, it's incredible. We're able to do this. Okay, you are first this time. Oh, am I? Okay. Very serious. Just like the closing moments of the last episode of The Queen's Gambit. You do realize if you don't let me win, I'm going to hang up. <laughs> <laughs> like a spoiled kid. <laughs> no! Well, there's only really one move I have there, which now means where are you going to go? Are you going to start staring at the ceiling and then doing all these moves before mm. anything happens? Yeah, this is a tricky one. Go on then, Tom. Thanks, Chris. I will stay on this episode now. Well, that's good. Because we've got I two didn't... more activities to do. <laughs> I didn't feel obliged to lose. And here we go again. Let's change this to green this time. Not the lines. Shall I do the big gloat? Yeah, go for your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... The fun and games is over. Let's do something that is kind of similar to what you would be doing at work, which is a design huddle. We've got the A, B designs of this chit chat mobile app. And we're both going to, uh, yeah, just start working with the post-it notes and vote. I think I'm gonna vote first. So when you run these sessions, you can have sometimes two votes you vote for the one that you like the most with green and then the orange is your second favorite i only have one favorite here so i'm going to copy this and move it down to here and during these sessions like uh you know where i work there can sometimes be 20 people in the same session uh, especially if it's a, a bit of a ux or ui you know showcase where you're bringing something to the rest of the team looking for their feedback and then trying to get some useful feedback that you can then go on to iterate your designs with. 
Uh, these designs are quite final. You might do that type of session when you're in wireframing stage or even in the explore stage. But Tom and I are going to jump straight into this one. So um, just to touch on that, Chris, so hypothetically, uh, not everyone's in the room, but they can still contribute to the work from wherever they are using this tool. Is that right? Yeah. So at the moment, it's just you and me, right? Yeah. Let's imagine there is about another 10 people. Then you would see like five to 10 green circles, and then you'd see a lot more post-it notes and everybody working on this at the same time. But yeah, they're really uh, valuable sessions. Like I, I love that collaborative feature of uh, Miro, which is where we do most of that type of work. But mm -hmm. Scaro here can do almost the same thing outside of you know automatically linking these to uh, each other. But I think I'm gonna go straight in, man. Let's just jump in, start giving our feedback, and then we'll go and iterate on this a little bit later. And this, uh, these, uh, these posts, are they color coded for a reason? The red ones for something you're kind of concerned about or need to get clarification on. Okay. Uh, the yellow one is just a general one. So somebody might um, post one going, yeah, I love it. Uh, green is if you uh, like it or have something that you think is an improvement. Yep. You might find someone else putting this CTA looks like it's inactive. Is this intentional? So I think you have to interact with the input field before it will get an active button response. Reduce number of buttons so user can make quicker decision. Fair enough. There you go, love the illustration. <laughs> This was just a, a basic icon that's been placed there. Maybe that's the app icon and you've got the title below it. But yeah, the illustration uh, really makes it pop. If you know what I mean. It makes it more is isn't it? Yeah, it just gives it a bit more character. What color is my uh, name to you? Blue, Tom? blue, what color am I? You're blue as well. Wow. But you never really see both at the same time. No, I, I can see your cursor and your name, but I cannot see myself hovering around. Mm. Uh, um, Which is interesting because Miro shows both of those things, right? Yeah. And yes, it, it does. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's nice because it helps you kind of orientate yourself a little bit. So maybe that's a point that we can bring up for Sketch themselves. Maybe they want to you know, uh, update this feature so you can actually see your own one or or at least have the option to replace your OS cursor with one that looks like you're in here with uh, everyone else. Yeah, there's a sense of industry when you can see others and yourself within there. I think that'd be less of a concern when you're both designing something. So maybe, yeah. um, we can think about what we're actually going to take from these screens to move over to the new screen. Just notice this illustration, this fella has a mask on. I think you'll find it's a lady and she's being- Really? How, how can you tell? There's no curvature to her. I think that's because it's not an actual real person, Tom. Oh, really? No, that's not a photograph. That's an illustration of someone that's made oh, up. My bad, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, and a bit of a shout out here to the team that put together the uh, blush plugin. That's where I uh, got this from. Pablo Stanley himself, you know, pretty much created that plugin. So yeah, it's fantastic. And normally I would go and illustrate my own illustrations for any design that I'm doing, but this was put together pretty quickly. And yeah, Tom and I just wanted to jump in. You can even go in and uh, correct each other's spelling. There we go. Yeah, thanks for that. No worries. <laughs> you, might, you might want to have a look at inactive here on the bottom left. Is that you or me? That's me and uh, affordance. Is affordance. it an A or E? I believe it's an A. I think it's an A. Okay. Yeah. Inactive. I think you're right there, unless there's a hyphen. No, I think Inactive. Right. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we're designers. <laughs> Not copywriters. Okay, Tom. So 
looking at this, what do you think we can bring over to that third artboard to iterate on this? Green is definitely worth pulling across. So, you know, we, we both like the illustrative style. Um, I think um, there's an opportunity to look at taking Sketchboard 2 um, and increasing the font size. Um, and I think we need to be aware of what's going on in red, um, just because some mm. of that feedback is credible. And um, we need to make sure that we're addressing that in the, um, in the third iteration. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom out of here a little bit. And while I've got both of those artboards in view, I'm going to take over the system banner, which is the status bar there. Then I'm going to take over the home indicator. So at least we've got those two elements there. I will group that and call it what it's supposed to be called. Here we go, status bar. And move it above there. Great. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste that illustration as well. So once I've done that, I can place it in a content folder. Okay, do you want to bring over the heading? Yeah, absolutely. I might bring over these two CTAs. Was the feedback on this heading increase heading size okay so if i go over here yeah you're gonna have to use one of the other styles like uh yeah. i'll just okay. increase it in place just go to the uh scale design system and pick a larger one so this one is heading three yeah i've just gone in and put it to heading two I might, I might be really bold and go ahead and see what happens there. Bang, I like that. Yeah, it's not too bad. Like you might start with something that big on the login screen and mm. then the onboarding screens that follow can have heading two. So there's a bit of hierarchy there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with this second CTA is change it to just a text button. So I'm gonna go over to components and then button and text and large. Wow, something interesting happened there, but I can just go and copy the width of this button and make it like that. All right, I think that's better. So you've got the login screen, which is gonna take you to a dedicated login screen and then create a new account is just a, a low emphasis button now. It's pretty much just text there in case you haven't got an account. So it's trying not to take attention away from that main login button, which is now, unlike the first design, you know, it's completely active now. The other one looked like it was inactive. And I think to somebody who has, you know, is, is colorblind, both of those buttons would end up looking the same. Yes, definitely. I, th I think with this, uh, this evolution, there's a clear hierarchy there. And there is a dominant button that we want people to press it's a lot clearer and easier for the brain to understand without having to think too hard. And there you go. Like Tom and I iterated on two different designs to make this screen and we did it together. Okay, and that's pretty much done. If I just zoom back out, let's just take a look at what we did. Yeah, Tom uh, kicked my butt. But yeah, that's me beating you. Tick, tick, tick. Yep. <laughs> playing a game together and getting beaten twice by Tom. There you go. Had a bit of fun you there. Me running my cursor across the victory line. Yep, you could even do this. It's all you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that was just us having a bit of fun before having a design huddle, like the second artboard here where we looked at two designs and gave each other our feedback on them, uh, voted on the one that we liked, and then we iterated on it in the last artboard. And uh, Tom, what do you think about this feature? Uh, look, I think it's really useful, Chris. For one, understand how difficult it is for everybody to get in the same room at the same time, especially at the moment. Mm. Uh, and I think that this tool enables people to collaborate regardless of location in a way that is conducive to sharing knowledge and um, 
making sure the right direction and the right feedback comes to the right place, as opposed to fragmented feedback in fragmented places. Yeah, I, I kind of like this. Like there's a lot of times where I'll be designing something and I don't necessarily want to get a lot of people into the same file, but you and another designer can just jam something out. You can have a design yeah, time with each other where they contact you and go, uh, I'm putting this file together. I'm kind of a little bit stuck or I don't know where this component is in the library. Can you join me and we can just smash this out together? Um, so I can see myself using that, uh, you know, that capability of this like a lot. Okay, and that's it for this video. Thanks, Tom, for uh, joining me. Um, hopefully we can do this again, which would be uh, awesome, man. Thank you for having me, Chris. No, I've, I've, I've actually really enjoyed myself. Um, beating you at Noughts and Crosses was probably the, um, the best part of this. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, Sketch. As long as it brings people together to win and lose, basically. <laughs> You'll edit that out, no doubt. But, um, no, it's been, it's been maybe, great maybe be not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but thanks a lot, Tom. Like, um, yeah, it's been it's been good, man. We've been planning this for a little while. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, Christmas holidays were on. It's New Year's now, so yeah. Uh, thanks for going out of your way to um, be part of this, man. Thank you, Chris. Um, I've really enjoyed myself, and um, yeah, thanks very much. So, I hope you're taking care out there, looking after yourselves and each other, and we might see you together in another one. Bye. <laughs> See you, Tom. <laughs>